Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at uh, the um, autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a medieval Lithuanian. The sample is DA171. There aren't all that many ancient DNA samples from Lithuania or Latvia or Estonia, so they're very precious and we do need to cover all of them and I will cover in case I haven't, I will cover all of them eventually. So, uh, this individual was a man, and he's from Bersiu. I don't know how to pronounce that, unfortunately, guys. Uh, I don't understand what these Latin letters mean. I understand Kyrillic, but they don't use Kyrillic in Lithuania. Unfortunately, they use whatever this is, and I don't understand how to pronounce this. So, this individual basically lived somewhere in, uh, it looks like, northeastern Lithuania near the border with Latvia, and it dates to 1st to 7th century Common Era, uh, which basically means late Iron Age in the context of Northeastern Europe, it's late Iron Age, and it's likely Baltic culture. Well, we don't really know that for sure, but from the DNA we can make the assumption that this is a Baltic individual, uh, some kind of a Baltic speaker. What's interesting about his uh, Y DNA is actually it's L, L1025, and when I saw that, it's an N haplogroup, I was expecting uh, something weird to see. I was expecting to see some, something weird, some kind of East Eurasian admixture, because this is uh, this haplogroup did come into Northeast Europe from Eastern Asia, uh, from Siberia, and, you know, over the Urals with the finno ugric people. So this is a very finno ugric haplogroup, but what's interesting about it is it's actually most common in Lithuania and not in Finland. There is more people from Lithuania who are related to this individual who have this paternal lineage than there are in Finland. And in fact, it's even found in Poland. Look at that. Uh, Poland has a comparable frequency of this haplogroup to Finland. So this haplogroup seems to be very much concentrated in the Baltics and not so much in Finland and not so much among finno greek speakers. Although it is present in Finland too, in Finland too. so I'm not sure what the story behind that is. Uh, what's the connection between Finnish people with this haplogroup and Lithuanians? Uh, there does have to be a connection somewhere there. So now we're moving on to the appearance, and we're going to cover that before we cover his uh, GD match results. The GD match results are going to be in the very end of the video. Uh, for the appearance, this is what he looked like. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes with an amber center, kind of a Greek or like a long aquiline nose shape. And let's show you his results with my Nashakot first. So he, this is his results with Nashakot. As you can see, it's blue eyes with an amber center uh, at 28.8% likelihood. That's the biggest component that he scores, followed by hazel, followed by green, followed by blue, and um, only 5% likelihood of brown eyes and less than 1%, 0.5% likelihood of dark brown eyes for this individual. According to Nashakot, he's got blonde hair, according to Nashakot, once again, followed by brown at 19%, followed by red at 7%, followed by black at 6 but the hair color prediction doesn't seem to be very precise. When it's precise, when a lot of SNPs are found in the file, it tends to uh, it tends to be a lot more precise, like 90 to 0 or 90 to 5, rather than 67 to 19. So this is just a result of um, the file maybe not being as high quality as it could be. So he does have blue eye haplotype 2, and this is predictive of blue eye haplotype 1. So he also has blue eye haplotype 1, and also we know that he has blue eye haplotype 1 by the fact that he has blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, most of the time, if you have BH2, you also have BH1, although it does not work the other way around. Uh, because of the um, phylogeny that exists in this region, which you can you can watch a video now that's on my channel. He does not have blue eye haplotype 4, which doesn't really matter, because he has BH2, that's the important one here. Um, that's the big contributor to having uh, light eye color. And he most likely has derived variants in SLC 45A2, which is what we would expect uh, when talking about a Northeastern European in uh, the late Iron Age. By that time, Pretty much every Northeast European had two derived variants in here, but we don't really know that for sure because these two are not genotyped. Uh, this is also not genotyped, and uh, the IRF 4 hunter gatherer variation is also not genotyped. But, but based on his results with GED match, we can assume that this individual is ancestral to Baltic people, and Baltic people don't really have any uh, derived variants. They tend not to have derived variants in this IRF 4 variation, so probably zero here. We can't know that for sure, but we can make the assumption that it's probably zero here. So, does not have any drought variants in MC1R either, so there is no reason to assume he would have ginger here. And let's show you the, the picture for, for the eyes, because there is a picture too. So this is the 
the predicted eye color for him uh, looks very much like uh, the predicted eye color for me but his result does differ from mine in that I score less likelihood of blonde hair so maybe he's a little bit lighter than me I don't know probably similar color to me actually uh, in terms of everything else so he does have Greek shaped nose with Nashakot as well this is why I depicted him with Greek shaped nose in the, in the image here I had uh, artificial intelligence gen generate uh, image for me and then I I tweaked it a little bit in Photoshop so that it would look a little bit, it would match the prediction a little bit closer, that's what I do. And oh, I I'm, I'm forgot something, yeah. And for hair shape, this is his predicted hair shape. It's uh, straight hair, followed by wavy hair, followed by, but this is not very good, this is not a very good prediction because this was done with only two SNPs, only two genotypes were used for this calculation, so uh, don't take it at face value, I guess. Now we're gonna move on to... Uh, his traits. Alright, we're gonna move on to his traits. Uh, this is a very Im interesting part. So he has GG genotype in TAC1 and we're gonna talk about only the stuff that he is genotyped for um, because a lot of it is un simply not determined, a lot of it is simply not in his file. He has GG genotype in TAC1 which is a very typical genotype for most humans, leads to slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites. Uh, basically he does not have the A1 allele, he does not have the A allele which would decrease the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites by like 20 or 40 percent, a major decrease which he doesn't have. So he has the normal typical human genotype that leads to a slightly lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism. Uh, he's got AA genotype in this variation of DRD4 which is implicated in a higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Oh yeah, by the way, something I... Um, this stock one variation, it's in DRD2, but it's really in a different gene that's located right next to DRD2. I just simplified, and for simplicity's sake, I say it's DRD2, uh, but it's literally, it's really like ANKK something, ANK, AN, I can't remember for the, for the life of me, I can't remember, but it's right next to DRD2, basically, so that's why I call it DRD2 here. Uh, he has CC genotype here, which is an incredibly rare genotype that guarantees long form 5 HTTLPR and decreased risk of depression. This is very interesting to see uh, because I actually have heterozygous genotype here, so I have long form 5 HTTLPR. But this individual actually has homozygous derived genotype here. And by the way, um, this kind of uh, genotype, the CLE on this variation, is super, super incredibly stereotypically European. Like only Europeans have it. Nobody outside of Europe has the CLE, and even in Europe, it's super rare. Uh, so, good news for this individual, good news for this Baltic guy, probably not depressed, uh, although this does really contradict uh, the stereotypes we have about uh, Baltic people and Lith Lithuanians and Latvians in particular, because I think they have like the highest rates of suicide in Europe. Oop, should, probably shouldn't say that, because it's YouTube, but, you know, uh, I guess uh, in case of this individual, he's probably not depressed. Probably not a depressed guy. Uh, does not have any H63D variants for hemochromatosis and does not have any C65C variants for hemochromatosis. Probably does not have hemochromatosis. Uh, no micro P. You know what that is? Once again, I can't really say that on YouTube uh, because I gotta stay monetizer friendly and whatever. But you know what that is? No micro P. Good stuff. Uh, less likelihood of, of uh, weight gain if taking Zyprexa and lower odds of meth induced psychosis. Still should not smoke meth regar regardless of what you score for these odds of meth induced psychosis. You probably should not be smoking meth. And he does not have any albino variants, not albino. Uh, I don't think I've seen anybody with albinism variants so far. Now we're going to check his polygenic risk scores. And after that, we move on to GD match. Actually, we're going to move on to G G25 first, then to GD match. So this is his polygenic risk scores. Uh, as you can see, his scores uh, above average, pretty pretty much very high odds of schizophrenia, two times higher than typical. And he's not genotyped for anything for diabetes or Alzheimer's. So the only thing we can go off here is uh, 1.8 times the average odds of schizophrenia, which is, I guess, you know, pretty high. But he's not genotyped for a lot of it, a lot of the important variations here. So uh, this prediction maybe not so good. Now we're gonna look at his uh, G25. With G25 he is closest to Latvians and Lithuanians for the modern people but he's actually a lot more modern, a lot more northern, uh, excuse me, more northern in his ancestry than Latvians and Lithuanians. So this individual is very much hunter-gatherer because the majority of him is really hunter-gatherer. Look at that. Uh, Villa Bruna and the Fonta Vagarat 3. Well although Pinar Basi is also hunter-gatherer, but it's the ancestor of Anatolian and Neolithic farmers, right? So it's not, uh, it's hunter-gatherer in its lifestyle, not so much 
uh, in the context of its genetics compared to you know European hunter gatherers such as EHG, WHG. So this individual from the Baltics is actually very much northern and more northern than any modern people who live in in Europe today. Uh, even Latvians who are among the most northern people in terms of ancestry, who are among the least Mediterranean and the least uh, like Anatolian farmer, Caucasus hunter gatherer, the least southern people in Europe. They are still a lot more southern than this uh, late antiquity bald. Because as you can see, Latvians have 43.6 Pinarbasi like admixture. Latvians have quite a lot of Mediterranean admixture. Uh, they are almost half Mediterranean. Russians are over half Mediterranean. Uh, like me, for example, I score around 50% too. Uh, but this um, late antiquity bald is only 37% and it's really impressive by European standards. Uh, really impressive numbers. I think Sami, Sami would probably score less, but Sami don't really count and Sami are a completely different case. So this is a very Northern individual in terms of ancestry and we're gonna move on to GD match now. We're gonna show you what he scores with GD match. For GD match, this is what this individual is scoring with MDL PK11 Modern. As you can see, he's mostly scoring European hunter-gatherers components. 54% uh, European hunter-gatherer. Uh, there is 23.7% Caucasus affinities here. By the way, the Caucasus category here is very grossly misnamed EHG. It's not EHG, uh, it's Caucasus. So he's scoring 23% Caucasus, 18% Neolithic, and 54.5% European hunter-gatherer. For comparison, I score like 30% WHG with this calculator. So this individual is a lot more a lot more northern than me, a modern Russian, a lot more northern than any modern ethnicity in Europe, aside from Sami people and maybe some Finnish people. With the Oracle, he's getting more of a mixture of bell beakers plus hunter gatherers. This is what he scores with MDL PK16. Here you can see once again, incredibly northern result, 47% Northeast European. This is something you're not gonna see in any modern European ethnicity aside from like Latvians and Lithuanians. And not even in Sami, because in Sami they would score a lot of Siberian. This individual is not scoring any Siberian. This is a very West Eurasian guy. And with the Oracle, he's closest to Latvians from Tessis, but this is as close as it gets, right? It's still not very close. The distance is still 10.1 because even Latvians from Tessis are a lot more southern than this individual, a lot more Mediterranean than this individual. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. As you can see, he's not scoring anything from West Asia or East Mediterranean. He's only scoring 3% West Mediterranean, which is pretty much nothing. So this is a very northern result once again. This looks like the results of somebody who could be from the pitted wear culture. I mean, you could really confuse this result for a pit where culture result. The only thing that's different is the South Asian and, and, and Red Sea that he's scoring, which would be kind of a typical for pit where individual. But still, he seems to be bridging the gap between uh, like bell beakers and corded wear and people like the pitted wear culture. This seems to be uh, the mixture here between some kind of Mesolithic hunter gatherer plus in the Europeans of the Bronze Age, such as, you know, corded wear or bell beakers. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K36. I'm just saying this to make you aware of how much Northern or hunter-gatherer admixture this individual really has. It's more than even the modern bots who have the most hunter-gatherer admixture in Europe, out of all Europeans today. This is what he scores with Pandiana LK10. Once again, you can see 56% WHG, just a crazy, crazy score. I score like 10% less. And with the Oracle, he's closest to Lithuanians and Estonians. Uh, this Oracle is not so crazy here. He seems to pretty much match the uh, Lithuanian reference population. So this is one of the not so crazy results, actually. Here he's a little bit more Southern than he is in reality. And he's even getting more or less a mixture of Lithuanian plus Russian, which is a more Southern ethnicity than Lithuanians are. Um, so this is what he scores with Pandiana LK12 Ancient though, and this really opens the eyes. Only 17% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, uh, very Northern result, 57% European Hunter Gatherer admixture, much more than what's typical for modern Northeast Europeans, aside from maybe some Latvians and Lithuanians, uh, which I guess this individual is ancestral to. But the point is, this individual is not just corded wear or bell beaker or a mixture of corded wear and bell beaker or like unities. No, this individual has a very significant amount of admixture from European hunter-gatherers. Uh, he's actually getting modeled here. I like this model. Um, lines number 12 through 14 unities plus various European hunter-gatherers. I think this is really what he is. I think this individual is a mixture of unities, which would be sort of a proto-Balto-Slavic, proto in the European Baltic speakers, plus some kind of indigenous Baltic hunter-gatherer admixture that was present uh, in the Baltics before the Indo-Europeans came there. This really seems to be what this individual is. He seems to be a mixture of uh, unities plus 
uh, Baltic Hunter Gatherer. Now, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download the file in 23 me format from link which is in the description. And uh, consider leaving a like and subscribing because this was a lot of work. Uh, I do like it when you guys reward my work a little bit. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.